Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Got another fun one for you today. I got only good games with me here. And uh, he recently just started up a channel. Big fan of Star Wars, especially the expanding universe. He's got a lot of cool content so far. He's got like a six episode series where he introduces himself. He's got some goal settings on there, some things that he'd like to collect. Uh, he did a, a podcast with Quinlan Boss recently uh, about the difference between a dark Jedi and a Sith. I checked that out because that's pretty interesting. I really enjoyed that one myself. So I just wanted to let you know that, buddy. And he just wants to, he just started this for to share his thoughts and opinions and ideas like the rest of us. So uh, how's it going, man? It's going pretty good, man. And, I, you know, I'm honored to be on your channel and appreciate the kind words as well. Yeah, for, I'm honored to have you on here, man. It's it's always, this is this is what I like to do right here. This this is it. I, I love talking with people. I like hearing their story. I like being able to share their story with somebody else, you know, because we all mm -hmm. have a different way that we got in uh, uh, our passion for Star Wars. Right. Right. You know, so, yeah. So how's your morning going? Uh, about as good as any. How about yourself? <laughs> good. Fresh hot cup of coffee here. I love doing that with my streams here. You know, nothing like a I, cup of brew. That, you, you drink coffee? I was, was going to say, I know the audience can't see me, but I got my cup here. <laughs> you can't see me, but it's here spiritually. No, no, that's it's all good, man. That's all good. Yeah. So you're also into, besides Star Wars, you're also into a couple other things, right? You, I will let me give you a little story here. Recently, only good guy, only good games, and I have been talking through voice messages. He kind of turned me on to that. I've never done that before. I was walking through the house doing it. My wife was kind of like looking at me, like, "What are you, what are you doing?" <laughs> That's funny. And that led me down another path here. I want to show you guys something here. I went and dug out this gem. I don't know if you uh, all know what this is, but it's the Talk Boy from the Home Alone movies. Wow. Yeah, I still classic. It. it was mine from the when I was a kid, early '90s. So that that's some voice messages there, you know. Wow, there you go. That's a throwback. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with you guys, but you also mentioned that besides Star Wars, you, you like Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. Really big into that, hey. Yeah, I collect. Uh, I'll say this: uh, I'm big into collecting Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not so much into like as far as playing the game or anything like that. You know, no, I respect everybody who does, of course, but you know, I'm a. a uh, from the era of the old school, we'll say that I'm from the era of the original series, the original season, and uh, I collect anything that's from that era or really anything that's rare. I'm, I'm really much uh, a rare hunter, as they would say in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. But uh, I have a lot of a lot of really rare, unique pieces in the Yu-Gi-Oh side. But uh, you know, now I, I'm into more collecting video games. I wouldn't say collecting as much. That's I've, I've kind of mentioned that before on my channel with the Star Wars stuff. You know, I don't like to call it collecting, although it is. Because I, I really just do it because I love it, and, you know, and I think a lot of people when they hear the word collecting, they think monetary value and they think somebody, you know, who's just uh, out for the money. Right. But, you know, like you, I think me and you both, you know, we really have a true passion for it. So that's why I do it. And, you know, with the Yu-Gi-Oh, I know a lot of people probably think, you know, that's kind of odd, kind of an odd thing or random thing. But, you know, that's something I really grew up with strong, you know, and anybody who's interested, I think, should check out the first, uh, you know, the original series with Yu-Gi and Kaiba. I think they'd really enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, that's my, my experience with Yu-Gi-Oh. I still collect. I stopped for like, like probably like for, I, I stopped when Yu-Gi-Oh GX came out for anybody who knows what that is. Cause I just had, was getting too cool for it, you know? And I thought, you know, I'm too cool for this mess. So I came back 2017, but I, I got, I got into Star Wars probably a few years before I returned to Yu-Gi-Oh I'd say. So yeah, the, I got it back into collecting everything about that time. Cool. Yeah. I never got into Yu-Gi-Oh. I was a magic, the gathering uh, type of kid. Mm -hmm. love that so i know there's sim similarities there but uh yeah that's cool that's really cool i got a friend that actually give a shout out to my buddy brock he uh he does you know he's been to some state championships and stuff. oh really yeah he's really big into it but that's awesome man yeah so then why don't you give us a little backstory of uh how you became a star wars fan oh man uh you know my memories with star wars you know are really just uh there's a lot of different ones so I, I think the first one i'll go with is when i was a kid i can clearly remember this you know it's kind of like one of those nostalgic things you can just kind of go to when you're you know feeling down or just want to think of a, a good past time and i think of uh think of in the late 90s you know i was born in 95 so i was very young 
uh, at this time in my life. But I clearly remember watching the original trilogy and playing Super Mario 64 back to back. I'd watch the movies over and over again, play that game over and over again. That's all I did. So, like, I just have a vivid memory of uh, <clears throat> the sun setting, it being uh, probably Friday night when I was a little kid, me watching Return of the Jedi and then going to play Mario 64. So that's kind of like the memories I have of beginning with Star Wars. But as far as the expanding universe, you know, I didn't start getting into that roughly till uh, 2013, 2014, right uh, when the f- either when Force Awakens was announced or uh, right before it had been announced. And I kind of got into it right when we were finding out that they were decanonizing the uh, expanding universe. So that's kind of my backstory. And my, my family, they love Star Wars too, but they're not into uh, the expanding universe or probably know about it or anything like that. You know, this is just kind of something I myself got into. And I think like many others, you know, I'm just in the journey now for many years. So that's pretty much my backstory. And like, I, I guess I got into the expanding universe basically by, I was really into uh, Darth Plagueis. I was really into uh, Darth Sidious returning. So I was big into Darth Plagueis, the book. Uh, I was into Dark Empire, except the end. <laughs> uh, big into really anything that had to do with the dark side. I was really big into the Darth Bane series. Uh, you know, anything that has to do with the Sith, I was really into. And I'm a big fan of Fate of the Jedi. So that was really my, uh, that was the that was like my favorite thing. So it's basically my introduction. <laughs> Keep right it short. On. Yeah, no, that's that's great. So the N64 is, is brought up a lot. You know, that that council, man. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got a lot of good memories with that. So you would watch it back to back. Hey, did you did you have the, the VHS your parents were playing for yeah. you? Or? Yeah, I should have said that. I should have said that. Actually, uh, I started watching the Star Wars when it came out, I guess. I can't really remember. I don't know if there was two different releases or it was one. But whenever George Lucas did all the interviews for the VHSs, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah. The where he, where he, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. when it, that's when I watched it. I don't I don't know. In that late 90s. So whenever the VHS came out, yeah, yeah. that's when I watched it. Cool. Do you have any uh, favorite moments of uh, the original trilogy as you would watch it as a kid? I mean, probably the same as everybody, you know, just the big moments, you know, from the from the first film, New Hope, probably just I think the thing that sticks out to me most in my mind would probably be just (laughs) Darth Vader, of course, you know, and just probably Obi-Wan disappearing. That's probably one of the biggest things in my head that just stuck stuck with me because I'm like, that's so crazy. How did he just disappear like that? You know, and, but from the second film from empire strikes back, of course the, you know, the Luke finding out Vader's his father moment was really, of course, really big. And I mean, to me as a kid, I, would never known about it. So when I watched it as a kid, I was just as blown as wet, blown away as anybody, you know, in 1980s when they first experienced it or whatever. I can't remember the exact dates of everything. So, but, and then the last film, you know, I, I'm a huge Darth Sidious fan. So, when he was shooting that lightning out at Luke and just that whole scene right there. At, I mean, and just when, when uh, Sidious uh, looks at, uh, he kind of does a smile when Vader and Luke cross blades, when he tells Luke strike him down, he's unarmed and all that stuff. And he has this evil smile. Yeah, and, that evil evil look. and that's just something that's always, always stuck with me. So, yeah. Yeah. Them, and them are some pretty iconic moments, man. You know, oh man, that battle with Vader and, and Luke and him revealing oh, yeah. that. And, I'm your father in that moment. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I still right away. My immediate thought is I go right to when he's, he's all in black and he's got the, the cloak on and return of the Jedi. And then he finally gets that saber and ignites. Oh it, yeah. And that's just like great etched in my mind. So when did you, when did you find out about the prequels? So you just kind of watched the OT, you know, over and I was, over uh, the rest of us, but the prequels. Yeah. I was actually, you know, obviously I was young, but I was actually around for the prequels and everything. Um, But the thing is, I can't remember seeing uh, episode one in theaters. I'm sure I did, but I was really young, so I really can't remember that. But I can tell you that I definitely remember seeing uh, episode two and episode three. You know, I can't remember it clearly, but I definitely remember that I did because I remember for, uh, I don't remember if it was for episode two or three, but I actually had some family come into town when I was really small and uh, it was a really special occasion because they were they were from Florida and they were visiting, you know, and I was super happy as a kid, you know, that they were visiting. And I remember we went to go see, I, I, I think it was episode two, but it might have been episode three. And uh, I just remember when they left, I was so sad, but I was just so happy we saw that movie together, you know. So that was something that really stuck with me that I've always remembered about the, the prequels. But, you know, as a kid, uh, you know, I was... Uh, 
you know, I thought, of course, some of the dialogue was not the best at times, you know, with Anakin in episode two. But I thought overall the movies were great. I enjoyed all of it. And, uh, you know, I love the prequels. I'm a very big prequel fan. I probably don't talk about it a lot, you know, on my channel yet. But I do like the prequels a lot. I think it was done really well. And episode three, I mean, is just an iconic film forever. I mean, you know, just that end scene right there, you know, where Anakin becomes Darth Vader is such an iconic scene that, you know, I'll never forget that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I re you know, what's crazy is I remember seeing episode one, like, a lot. But then I don't remember seeing episode two or three. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. I just don't know. I just think it was because of all that that hype. Not that mm -hmm. the others didn't, you know. Right. But just all that hype. Yeah, it was pretty big when episode one was getting announced, I could imagine, probably. And uh, so ha do does your family members, did you ever tell them that you were really, that you know, that moment with them meant a lot? No, that, you know, they're like I said, they actually live in Florida. All right. okay. they, may, they may have oh. moved, uh, I believe they actually live slightly closer now. But no, nah, we never really spoke. I've never, you know, like I've told someone else uh, mm -hmm. before, me being into Star Wars has never really been like a public thing. It's just been kind of something I just like did on my own and my own privacy. Right. So nobody really, really even knows probably except for y'all, except for everybody knows me, you know, in the expanded universe type thing. Yeah. No, that's a few people do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. So how did you find out, you know, you love the films and everything. What, like, how did you find out that there was like books and comics? Like there's a whole other side of just what we're watching on, on the, the big screen. Um, trying to think here. I remember I, as a kid being at like scholastic book fairs and stuff like that. And I'd see Star Wars books, see all types of books. But I think at that time, I just figured probably it was just the movies retold or something. You know, I don't know what I thought. You know, I, I guess I just didn't realize like, wow, this is, you know, this is uh, more of the story continued or things like that. But I didn't. Um, so I guess I always knew about the books, but I guess I didn't know the expanded universe and didn't know like what it was doing and that it enriches the universe and adds more to the story and everything like that until probably, uh, I, d I don't remember when it was, you know, it had to have been honestly just the truth is it had to have been something on YouTube that probably like reminded me of it, something that popped up maybe, you know, but it was, it had to have been like 2013, 2014, because for, you know, throughout basically my, I'm still in my twenties of course, but throughout my whole twenties and and before that, roughly, I had uh, just got into the expanded universe and have been reading, you know, reading or audio booking most of these, these, these basically every almost every main novel at this point. Now, there's still a lot, of course, in the Clone Wars I haven't got to yet. And I can't remember like a lot of them I'll kind of forget. And then, you know, I'll remember when somebody brings it up or we or me and you even talking about it real quick. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, I'd say me getting to the expanded universe is probably because mostly Darth Plagueis, the, the book and dark empire so when i you know when i get when i read dark plagueis i just was like this is a this is a masterpiece you know i was blown so blown away i, I, I think i've probably read or listened to an audiobook dark plagueis probably over 10 times because that's such a classic book i mean there's so many quotables and just you know what i'm saying i, I think you're reading it I, I don't know if you're yep. still reading it yeah so as you know there's some great moments in there that you could just go back to any time just for, just to read you know yeah. so that's pretty much crutch me pretty much what made me get into those books yeah fantastic Great <laughs> fantastic novel fantastic that's, yeah it's, i'm blown away with it well that's cool yeah i'm kind of like similar you know i knew about the books and read them as i mentioned before in the past a little bit but it wasn't until later like a few years back and then you find mm -hmm. out because i know you mentioned we'll touch on this like the the decanonization when disney bought it you know that i just kind of realized that myself you know after watching youtubers so you brought that up you came into that time era when there was the, the, the split off. Like, did do you remember that or how did, did that affect you at the time of what you thought? Bas basically, the, the truth is, is that when all that was happening, I was, you know, very new to the expanded universe and everything like that. So I, I didn't really know what it meant as far as Disney, you know, buying it. I, I was kind of excited, honestly, because I thought, OK, well, you know, we haven't had any movies in a long time, so maybe they're just going to plug in what I'm reading right now and just make the movies of, you know, of, uh, you know, let's say dark empire or, or the Thrawn trilogy or something. So I'm thinking, you know, they, they gotta do something like that. That just seems like the only right way. So, you know, when they had announced, you know, we got Ray and Kylo Ren and all that stuff, you know, I don't like to speak on Disney stuff too much, but I, I do it. Mm -hmm. I try to, anytime I speak on Disney stuff, I try to do it in a truthful way where I'm honest to you about how I feel, but at the same time, not try to trash the people who, 
too hard who are into it because, you know, I, it's not my purpose to be on here on YouTube. But I will say at first, I thought the first one was was kind of boring, honestly, just in my personal opinion. And I just I, I still didn't grasp the concept that they have decanonized the expanded universe. That didn't sink into like a few more years later. So I really like knew what was up and talked to more people and got into contact with some of the people. Uh, some of the people on here, believe it or not, on in the in our group chat on Instagram, if people don't know we have a little group chat about uh, expanding universe, and some of those people I've probably talked to in the past, they probably don't remember it, but many years ago I would just on and off comment on people's videos, you know, things like that just come in. But uh, you know, when I tried to uh, give the new movies a chance, honestly, you know, I watched, I've watched, I've, I've watched everything Disney actually, anything that's ever come out of Disney, I've seen it. But I, I I will say that episode, I'm not uh, a Last Jedi like the person who thinks that's the worst one. I personally think episode nine is the, the worst one Disney has ever done. Um, but I do understand people's hatred for episode eight as well. You know, mainly obviously the way they treat Luke, things like that, not to get into too much of the Disney stuff, but that basically I never, uh, when, when I finally realized what that meant, that all these hard, hard working authors, writers, all these people that worked, you know, expanded universe was, you know, around since the late seventies, uh, so this is, you know, what, almost 50 years, maybe I'm, I'm not good with the math right now, but that, that's, that's just, uh, really sad for everybody who was into these stories just to have their memories and their, their canon just thrown out the window and not to mention all the books that were already on the way being worked on different things, uh, when the decanonization happened. So we've lost, you know, really big treasures as, as we've, we've talked about in our little chat before. And yeah, so, you know, basically that's, that's kind of what led me into the expanded universe was Disney's buying it out even more. Like I was just loosely listening to the books, the expanded universe here and there when I had a chance, you know, but when I found out about that, it made me more kind of hone in and to realize like, I need to study this story more like this, this is something more. So that's, that's really when I became a true fan. And I, and whenever I watched the Disney stuff, I would just watch it just as something to watch. You know, there's nothing wrong with just watching it just to see what's going on. I always want to see what star Wars is putting out, you know, regardless who owns it, you know, yeah yeah no that's uh that's a great answer and uh yeah could have answered that any better i don't think in a sense because i'm i'm everybody knows and listens to me i'm the middle of the road kind of guy i like some of what disney's doing i don't like some of what it's doing i like where the eu i like that story you know right. i kind of i watch disney as what it is you know mm -hmm. so um but <clears throat> excuse me like it. The, the eu side of things like i like that that's a story i can see that i can visually that's where i wish things would have stayed so mm -hmm. you know it's it's kind of one of them toss-ups you know there it's you don't the what ifs you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. like the what ifs but anyway back to the books here audiobooks you brought up i i, I heard you bring that up and i tried it it's hard like i you know, it's like squirrel, you know, it's hard for me to focus. Sometimes I try <laughs> listening to that work, but, uh, you've said you listened to Darth Plagueis probably about 10 times. Hey, on, 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 a, mm -hmm. on oh. yeah. So what, why don't you, for some people that don't, um, have never heard a book on audio, why don't you give them a little taste of what that experience is like? You know, is there sound effects? Is there different voice actors and actresses? Or... That's a, that's a great question actually, because there's so many different audio books out there right now that you, you have unfortunately not the best option for a lot of these uh, older books. You know, a lot of the Bantam era books, they're really, <laughs> a lot of them are really kind of poorly audio books. Most of them are abridged and you can sometimes find them unabridged. There'll be rare occasions. Um, actually they make every audio, they have an audio book for everything actually, but it's only for the, the uh, I believe it's the hearing impaired. And it's uh, if you have health problems, you actually can get get those if you submit to uh, I can't remember the website off the top of my head, but they got the audio books. It's, it's like it's a government type of thing. I think I don't want to say that wrong, but basically with audio books, it can be I gonna say this for anybody who's trying to listen to one. I think personally, in my, from my experience, the best way to do it is to be by yourself, silent room and just be able to focus on that story. And if you need to run any, it's just like a book, you know, if you need to run, run the audio book back a few seconds, you know, maybe a minute, you kind of, you know, zoned out for a second, didn't follow the story as they, some of the stories, I'll say this, some of the stories, the way they're written are, are very hard to follow. 
like most of them are very well written and you can follow along with them very good. But there are some that I've had to, to really go back a few times, you know, read, I'll read a, you know, I say read a page, but I'll run it back on the audio book because, you know, I didn't interpret that the way I wanted to. Or for me, me personally, when I, when I listen to an audio book, I'm, I'm visualizing it just like I'm watching the film. So when I'm listening to, let's just say Darth Plagueis, I'm visualizing this in my head, just like I'm watching, you know, any Star Wars film. I try to the best of my ability. You know, there's sometimes that the descriptions of maybe the planets, the rooms are in are vague, you know, but the thing is, I try to just plug in the best I can with my imagination. That's the great thing about the expanding universe is, is we can kind of create a lot of these, how we want, you know, in our, in our head, how we imagine them being heard, heard. But I'd recommend, I'd say for the audiobook thing is the best thing to do is if, if you're looking for an audiobook or whatever book it is, try to find the unabridged version so you can get the full story. And if you can't get the unabridged version, you can go onto YouTube and I'm, I'm going to plug them right now. YJK Audiobooks, huge, great channel. I mean, what they're doing for the Expanded Universe, just providing these audiobooks unabridged is truly amazing. So I want to give them a shout out. And I think that anybody who can't find an audiobook unabridged, there's a good chance it's on there. There are a few other channels who are doing it as well. And basically, if you can't find it unabridged, I just recommend reading the book. Because at that point you're you're you want to get the full story. So that's my thing on audiobooks. But you know, I've told I've talked before. I used to feel like kind of like a fake fan because I felt like if you didn't read the books, you're not like a real fan. Oh, I, I didn't sit down with the books and actually flip through the pages. But I realized how stupid that is because we're all just trying to get the story right. So at the end of the day, how you know that's kind of like a stupid thing to feel. You know? Yeah. No. That, that, yeah, that's silly. At, at the end of the day, we're all getting the material, and that's cool. And I had no idea that there there was an audio book for any for any you know for all books and for the impaired of hearing that's uh that's yeah. awesome that's crazy that there's a program and good for that you know i wish that it was more available to to everyone though at this point now because i just feel like why not you know it's kind of like one of those things like why not you know but at the same time i didn't answer your question about the sound effects if you're looking for great sound effects all the newer audiobooks like an audible and stuff like that I mean, they have some great sound effects. I mean, you know, Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi. They even just, uh, they're redoing a lot of the, the older audiobooks now in Audible. So, yeah, it just depends what you're looking for. The older the audiobook, the less chances you are going to have, you know, good sound effects type stuff. The older you are, pretty much the worse it's going to be in, in quality. And then the newer it is, generally it's going to be better. But there are some exceptions because there are some audiobooks back in the day or audio dramas, rather, that were very good quality. So, yeah, it just depends. Yeah, that's cool. Well, thanks for the information and uh, the y, YJK audio yes. on YouTube. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. We'll have to check them out. I have to cop, put a link in the description. I'll have your link in the description down below as well. Sure. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, I can't really do the audio thing, so I, I pretty much stick with the books. I, some yeah, people it's not for walk, everybody. Yeah, some people can walk and, and read, you know, so it, it's crazy. Everybody's got their own thing. But yeah. you mentioned earlier that you're a post-Return of the Jedi fan. Mm -hmm. so and you've read uh, a pretty or listened to a pretty good chunk of books yeah uh, including heir to the empire trilogy young jedi knights courtship princess leia some prequel books you mentioned dark plague yes uh mall lockdown so you've you've, you've had a taste all over mm -hmm. is there anything from that era that you would have liked to have seen on the big screen post return of the jedi for post return of jedi i've i've read or listened to an audiobook every novel except for NJO, New Jedi Order, um, because the first time I went through, I did not have any access to those in audiobook or and did not have the books. So at that time, I made the dumb decision just to skip. Well, I didn't have the – actually, I didn't have the audiobooks or books for Young Jedi Knights or Junior Jedi Knights as well. So – and I also – this is just adding more into the list here, but I skipped the entire X-Wing series as well. So I've skipped – I skipped – Pretty some some stuff that's major, some that's not. Uh, you know, the NJO is a major major piece though, and, and same with Young Jedi Knights and Junior Jedi Knights. So this time through, I just got to those. But uh, basically, every novel post Return of the Jedi I've listened to, there are a few that I haven't, like a Cross Current Riptide, and I believe uh, Millennium Falcon. Or no, I can't. Remember. Is Millennium Falcon post Return of the Jedi? I forget with that one. I forget with that one. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one. And, yeah. There's a few random ones that I haven't read to, but everything that's like a main story I've listened to on audiobook or read. But I'd say to pick one would be really, really, really hard. I mean, what, I'd love to see it all. I mean, honestly, but the thing is, you know, realistically, just like Alex has said before, you know, I think I'd like to see kind of like what he was saying, you know, kind of like maybe uh, 
I don't know, Dark Empire, of course, Heir to the Empire. Yeah. What else? I'm just trying to think what other series I'd like to see. I mean, of course, I'm a big uh, Fate of the Jedi fan. That's probably my, my favorite series. So probably I, I'd love to see, you know, Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi, of course, New Jedi Order, all that stuff. Of course, it would be really, really hard because it's just so much, so many movies, so many, you know, it would be like episode 2000 probably by the time we got to the end of it, but I'd be here for it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, uh, so you mentioned there, I just, uh, Fate of the Jedi is your favorite? Mm-hmm. I would say, yeah. What, uh, I'm not familiar with that that storyline or, or where that plays in the factor. Well, I know on the timeline, you know, towards the end, correct? Right. Yeah. What's like? What's a little summary of that? Of what that moment in the timeline is? I'm trying to do this without being too spoil spoilery. Yeah, I mean, but uh, most of the people probably have read it or you know, just there might be um, spoilers. I can I'll say a few things here. You know. Sure. Uh, well, it's about Abeloth. I don't know if you know who Abeloth is. No, I, no, I don't. Um, Abeloth <laughs> is basically the most powerful being in Star Wars. Uh, I know that's kind of a shocking thing just to say, but Abeloth, I don't know if you, it, it has slightly some, you know, not really slightly, it does have some Clone Wars connections um, because there is an episode with the Mortis arc in the Clone Wars that has to do with the father, the, uh, the son, and and uh you never and the daughter and you never see the mother so in this story you get the mother um this story has to do a lot with the star kai kai excuse me that's also that's actually my favorite female character uh when you find out about her i think you'll really really like her and mm-hmm. she has a story a story arc that, that a lot of people haven't talked about i don't think and it's actually in my opinion very very heartbreaking and similar to anakin skywalker and a lot of kind of different ways that people may not realize, I think. But I, I say that it, it's, in my opinion, it's the most on my seat and the edge of my seat I've been for any story in Star Wars. You know, you don't, you truly don't know what's going to happen next. Avaloth is more than a threat, more than, even, I, I, this is crazy to say, but more than Sidious, more of a threat than Sidious. This, she is such a threat that you just don't know how they are going to possibly solve this. And Luke, in this book, he just goes to the next level on this book. I can't even just basically everything you've known about Luke up to this point. He just puts all of it to the test right here and puts it all in line. So this is something right here. This is just like the everything you've been waiting for, in my personal opinion, with Luke. So that's a good a good thing I'd say about it. And you see a lot with Ben, with his son, with Luke's son. Um, I'm not going to I'm trying not to spoil anything here. I'll say a lot. Jaina Solo is doing some very, very big things. And I'm trying to think of anything else I kind of say uh, about Faye the Jedi, just to be unspoily. Man. Uh, it's it's. I'll just say I I love Faye the Jedi, and that's just that's just me. <laughs> that's yeah. That sounds amazing. Now you wait, see that's what it's like. I'm trying. I'm taking my time enjoying this, and then you hear mm-hmm. stories like that. It makes you just want to. Okay, I got to get there. You know. So, but I got to yeah. calm, cool, collective around here. <laughs> just chilling. Sure. Back to the original thing. I didn't mean to tangent off on that, but I, I was curious and, and we'll come back to that. But yeah, the favorite movie trilogy, a lot of people right away go to Air to the Empire for like right. post Return of the Jedi, which makes makes kind of sense, you, you know, because that that book came out and it, you know, just blew everything away. And it was impressive. And, and everybody has the same reaction as they can feel them characters. Mm-hmm. They can visually, you know, see that all happening and shaking down right yeah i'd love for i mean honestly i'd love for air to the empire dark empire all of them to be made uh i mean we've lost that time now honestly to be honest i've I've made a video on my channel before about miss 90s opportunities with the movies and i just think that mark hamill in the 90s was a prime time to do uh air to the empire and dark empire i mean i can't i can't express how much of a miss moment that was yeah you kind of just be rolled right into my next thing here uh i was gonna bring that up because that video that you did i that was uh, that was a great video and i suggest people should watch that kind, man. yeah no it was really really good man and you want to elaborate on that a little more because that's that's what i wanted to talk about um you know i just want to say you know I, I appreciate anybody who watches any of my videos and i know i'm uh i'm basically a, how do you say this an embodied voice since i have i don't show my face and you're only getting audio in my videos uh, so I, anybody who can find enjoyment out of my videos, you know, I mean, I really, really, really appreciate that, you know, and I appreciate your kind words as well. 
Yeah. But to, uh, you know, kind of, kind of get back into that. I, I don't, uh, you know, the thing about it is, is they had their plans for episode one to kind of stir in the background at, you know, in the nineties. And, you know, like I'm not a huge expert, so I can't tell you the exact dates of when they started working on episode one, you know, when George started, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of things when he, the day he actually supposedly started writing it and it's a whole video and things like that. But, uh, so I don't know if we realistically could have ever gotten heir to the empire, or dark empire as movies, but I mean, I just think, that the the way Mark Hamill looked in the nineties, I know this is kind of random, but I think he looked, looked like he kind of would in these movies. You know, I think he, he, the, the age he was and everything was a good time. I think the yeah. way film filming was as well. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the older films, you know, even the Ewok movies. I love the way they look just kind of their old fashion look to them. Yeah. And I think that the nineties, you know, a lot of the great night, I, I love nineties movies as well. So I really think that those movies would have looked so so amazing and just the style of the old film and kind of would have lent to uh you know air to the empire and dark empire especially yeah. but yeah i think that it's we got a lot of missed up there's also uh you know i'm not for sure if this is 100 confirmed because it could just be you know a rumor but i've seen before that they were planning a uh, young jedi knights tv show in the 90s that was actually really close to happening and it was going to be a cartoon um, and I would have loved to seen that, you know, I think that would have been really good for the expanded universe just to have that in our record books that say, you know, we could say, see, look, we got uh, young Jedi Knights right here in the cartoon. Yeah. I, I think that would have been really popular to people. Uh, but I'm not for sure what happened with that. So I'm not for sure if that was true or not, but I mean, I think that's a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. It sounds like the more that I dig into this background in this world, that there's a lot, there was a lot of missed opportunities for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate, especially for the fans. And like you said, the what ifs could have happened here. Yeah, Mark Hamill looked good. I mean, Harrison Ford looked good. Carrie Fisher. I mean, they could have did a lot. It's, oh man! And but you know, the, my quick thought here on on George Lucas is, you know, mentally and emotionally and physically, this this job probably took it all out of him. So he probably didn't want to sell, you know, and give it away. And you know, if he would have continued to make movies or whatever. But I, that's just my thought. Like it just drained, drained the soul out of them. But I mean, in a good way. Mm -hmm. So collecting, you mentioned you like to collect. Is there certain specific items that you like to collect? Like the books, the comics, or is there, I mean, even any other fandom? Um, uh, well, for Star Wars, of course, uh, I didn't start. Uh, getting stuff. I didn't actually own any Star Wars book until last year. I was randomly, for some reason, I was uh, at a Books a Million or something like that. I don't know if I was buying a present for someone or doing something. And um, I saw Darth Plagueis sitting in there with the Legends banner. I just like, man, I got to pick this up. I just, I just got to have this. Yeah. So I bought that. And then a few months later, I was just kind of looking at the Darth Plagueis book. And I was like, that would be something if I got that hardcover. You know, I should look that up. And I looked it up. And I got it. I got it on a bid, so I ended up getting a mint condition Darth Plagueis hardcover, which is my first hardcover and my first like collecting book. And I got that for like fifty bucks, which was a pretty good deal, I think. I don't really know how much those go for actually, but yeah, that was my first one pretty much. And to I guess to uh, I'm trying to think, it had been a few months after that because I was kind of thinking like, should I really buy these books? You know, like where am I going to store this stuff? You know, where am I going to put this stuff? I don't have a cool bookshelf put up. Like actually, I do. But it's it just has a bunch of stuff on it, and actually this weekend I'm going to work on cleaning it out. But yeah, that was kind of where I, I got into it. It took me a few months to really like decide that I was going to get this stuff because I'm like, like I've always had this stuff online, you know. I was like, do I really want to get this stuff? But that's kind of where it began for me. I don't know. What about you? Where did where did it begin for you? Well, that's a good question. Where did it begin for you? Well, <laughs> my lockdown was the the first book that kind of got me back into this years ago. I didn't know. I still wasn't you know deep diving down the expanded universe realm here so that i was just walking by and i saw saw it out of the corner of my aisle at at walmart i'm like the end end cap for books and it's like well there's mall you know i was a fan of mall because i love the phantom menace right so i got it read it there but just collecting i've always loved the figures uh, on the other side of collecting i've always you know the power of the force stuff reminds me of my childhood and that was a great time and it was a good place and you know, just fond memories. And then everything else just kind of, you know, the trickle effect, you know, the books I'm with, you though, 
because I, I had this with a conversation with Quinlan Voss on his channel. And that's like the hardcovers are nice, but then they take up a lot of room and they're heavy. And then you got mixed paperbacks and it's For sure. So I don't know yet. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to probably draw a line and just want the hardbacks of the root books that I really enjoyed. Like you like play this, you said. And to me, that seems like a steel deal that you got it for. Cause I mean, I've tried to look up books and it's like, holy man, 80 bucks for a hard cover of mall lockdown. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, well, I'm not going to spend that. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not there on that. Maybe a figure, you know? Yeah. So is there any like piece that you have? Uh, maybe the play is novel is, but like that you're really proud of having like something maybe rare. Um, honestly, uh, uh, I just recently started collecting the comics as well because at first, like I said, I was debating, like, should I collect the books? And then there was, uh, I don't know. If, I, I don't know. I guess it's just talking with people like, uh, the, the revanchist Marcel talking mm -hmm. with Alex, talking with, uh, Brennan Quinlan Voss, talking with a lot of people like that. I think they kind of maybe inspired me lightly to go after the comics and actually get them physically, especially tales of the Jedi with the, uh, with the revanchist or revanchist. Sometimes I pronounce it wrong. Um, you know, he's a, he's a big tales of the Jedi guy. And, um, you know, I've kind of roughly watching some of his videos and I've, I've read some of the tales of Jedi before, but I didn't get a chance to read all of it. And, um, you know, I just decided, you know what, I might as well get these, these, these comics and start doing that. But I'd say for like rare pieces and stuff like that, um, I wouldn't say, I don't, I don't know. Let's see for books. Uh, I'm actually doing a book, uh, what do you say? A book collection videos soon, mm -hmm. but, uh, I'll give everybody some, <laughs> some pieces of it right here in this video. There we go. All right. So some of my rare stuff for hardcovers, uh, I'd say hardcovers right now. I have a dark empire trilogy, which is very rare. Hardcover. Mine is really rare because it's just brand new. And it's never been read, and everything about it is like mint. I'd say also some other rare hardcovers. Actually, I have a, some pretty good things I'd say coming in. There are the, these uh, Marvel original years, uh, like omnibus type hardcovers, and they're, they're really rare. And they're the direct market variants, which have these three different covers than the normal ones. And uh, I'm very happy about those. I'm really proud to have got those because they're very hard to find. And I had to order them from like these different countries. Like one was. Uh, uh, one, excuse me, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting now. Uh, I had it just, uh, just from all around, I was going to say exactly where they came from, but they came from so many different places. It would just be going on too much, but yeah, I also have the Lando hardcover books. They're the, uh, unfortunately they're not the, I don't think mine are first edition, but they're extreme, extremely great condition. So I'm very proud about those hardcover mm -hmm. and another hardcover. I'm trying to think, uh, let me think here. Let me think, let me think. I don't know. I have a bunch of hardcovers, so I'm, I'm really trying to think. I have I have some a lot of the rare omnibus type ones hardcovers. Uh, I I can't think right now. It's kind of my my memory is getting bad since we're here on video. Of course, uh, no, anytime no. I need to like list it off, I, I can't remember. I, I'll say this: I have a bunch of really good hardcover stuff that I've got. I've I've spent way too much money, honestly, the past few months. I hate to admit that, but yeah, I, I've I bought a bunch of hardcovers. I, I've I have a gigantic collection of hardcovers now. No room, and when I'm collecting New Jedi Order, being it's 19 books, that's going to be fun to have in hardcover. But my my rarest comic. Um, well, I only have a few right now. Well, not really a few, but I have a few series. I have all the Tales of the Jedi, normal, like normal printing. Then I have them in direct market variant. I, I believe I have those. Then I have the gold version of those, which is limited to like, I believe 7,500, but I, can't, I could be wrong. And then um, I just, I think it was last week, I got the um, Dark Empire 1, Dark Empire 2, uh, both gold edition, limited, uh, you know, edition versions. I can't remember how many were made of them, but I also have the normal versions. I have the normal versions of, of pretty much of all these, but I got the gold versions. And then I got the platinum, uh, version of dark empire, which is, I think it's the rarest one, but I'm not for sure on that. I'm not for sure on that. But then I also have my last, my last rare ones, I think are probably the, uh, the original, uh, heir to the empire Thrawn comics with the direct market variant which is very rare version from what I've, from what I've gathered. I, I'm not too much expert, but that's pretty much my top ones. I, I think. Well, you can uh, be Santa Claus man still, and you can say <laughs> something like that over here for sure. Oh yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I don't have nothing. Do you have a ton, man. You yeah, have some I great got stuff, books, man. but I, you know, they ain't, I ain't got none of that platinum, you know, oh, you got some great stuff, man. 
Hey, thanks. So I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. I'll be looking forward to seeing that, checking that video out. Yeah. So now we got a little little spoiler on that vid. Um, Whenever it comes out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Is there uh, is there any other? I know Yu Gi Oh. We talked about a little bit in the, mm-hmm. of the video, but in uh, games, like what kind of games? Like oh, that's uh, a good one. video games, like you know, old PS One games or. Oh man, that's a good one for video games. Oh man, so I'm, I I could just go in on that one. I I try to keep it short. Uh, right. Like, are you do you, you want you want to know like rare games I have or something? Oh no, just like the you collect video games. Okay, as well. okay, yeah. So I, you know, I like I said, I hate to call it collecting because I I play wow. the games because I want to play them. You know, it's, it's like Star Wars. I get the the reason. I think the reason why I get all the stuff is because I want to have the Star Wars stuff is just because I want to have a little shrine just to sit here and be like, you know, enjoy it. But yeah, with right. the games. You know, I'm a big fan. My favorite games, I'll say this real quick, which I haven't got. I just want to say I haven't started my reviews for my games on my channel, which I know is really strange. My name is Only Good Games on here. Haven't done one game review except for a small little just half put together Banjo 3 fan made trailer on my page. You know, but besides that, I, I'm just I'm just waiting to get the uh, the capture, uh, the, the right uh, way I can get the footage to be HD you know, of the game reviews, sure. but, but to be, to say this, you know, my favorite games are Banjo Kazooie, uh, Zelda, you know, Mario, Sonic, uh, Tekken. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Dragon Ball. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of many, many games, so I could go on forever, but I'll just say that I'm a fan of the old stuff and I, I try to keep up with the new stuff the best I can, but there's so many new games coming out. I'm still trying to play all the old ones. So it'll be take me forever. You know, I'm still playing breath of the wild that I started, in 2000 i was late to getting a switch but i was late to even playing that so i'm still trying to beat that game because the new the new breath of the wild come out in may so i got till may to hurry up and beat that one so yeah all right yeah, yeah. no yeah i can go on about video games as well I, yeah. I love a lot of them that you mentioned i don't collect them anymore unfortunately you know but oh no it's fortunately they're they're very expensive so you're <laughs> probably saving yourself a, a good good hassle. yeah <laughs> So you you just kind of mentioned I was going to roll into this, uh, like what's the future looking like over on on uh, Only Good Games channel? And you kind of mentioned a little bit about book reviews. You're going to do some video reviews. Like what else is there anything on the pipeline there? So uh, what's coming up? Main thing I'm I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a way to do my Star Wars videos in a more entertaining way. Um, you know I've done my expanded universe talks episodes one through six. Um, I'm, I'm going to go up to, I believe episode 12 on that one and end that as a season. And then after that, I'm thinking of doing something, doing my reviews and then adding on a new segment, which I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of brainstorming, brainstorming right now. Um, but as far as the video game thing, uh, as we talked about before, I'm trying to get the right way to, uh, capture footage that I can get the stuff on YouTube in HD quality. Yeah. And I got to figure out what I can do as far as like with copyright stuff, because, I'm really bad with that type of stuff. And anytime I upload a video, I have a billion copyright uh, things. So I have to figure out a way that I can do my videos without, you know, uh, copyright issues and things. And as well, I'd say uh, coming up Yu-Gi-Oh wise, uh, I'm just going to have really rare uh, video, really rare openings coming up. Uh, I'm actually going to be opening some really rare product within the next few weeks. Uh, 2002 Blue Eyes 10, which is extremely rare at this point. And I'm going to be doing that kind of special occasion. And, uh, you know, as far as, other Yu-Gi-Oh things, I plan to have some Yu-Gi-Oh talks as well because I've done Star Wars talk. And I mean, there's so much Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge that I could talk about that it could just go on. So I'm going to do that for my Yu-Gi-Oh people out there. And there's a lot of misconceptions in the Yu-Gi-Oh world, just to kind of mention, there's a lot of scammers, a lot of bad people out there. So I'm going to be working to clear the airways on that. So I'm going to be doing that. And I think uh, with Star Wars though, I'm going to be having Quinlan Voss back on the channel going to be having marcel on the channel we're going to be doing some great stuff got alex coming on real soon got you coming on soon and we got many other people uh coming on the channel soon but uh like i said there's a lot of stuff coming on the channel we just got i just got to uh find the time to get everything prioritized you know and like i said i want to do that collection video at some point so i'm trying to get all that handled so i hope uh everybody can bear with me and i hope the, the the content i've done so far i hope it is uh you know, I hope it's enjoyable and not too boring. So I appreciate everybody for even giving me a chance. You know, I'm just a random, random person here, putting my opinion out there, throwing my hat out into the, the arena. So, mm-hmm. you know, I hope you guys have enjoyed my perspective so far. And I hope that I can uh, bring you guys some even better 
stuff soon. You know, I really would like to do some anim, put some animations in the videos, you know, yeah. put some like more graphic things, you know, that I can show you, you know, show you what's going on when I'm talking about stuff, you know? So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Well, excellent. That sounds great, man. A lot of variety for a lot of, you know, different folks, different, well, majority of everyone's kind of all in, in the same thing. It seems like, you know, as, mm-hmm. as, as we all talk and y- you watch each other's, um, uh, content and such so you get to learn a little bit about them but yeah your your stuff is great man that's why i wanted to have a, have you on here because uh, it's that uh, eu talks you've been doing man are great you come off like a great person you got a great personality positive you know true it's too kind man it's too yeah no for sure and uh, i've been enjoying chatting with you and this has been a lot of fun so far and uh but now we're gonna get to some more fun stuff awesome so uh what type of character I'm gonna, you know, I'm mean, kind of keeping tallies of all this stuff because for fun. In the Star Wars universe, would you like to be like a Jedi, Sith, smuggler? I think Alex kind of said this before. Would I like to be? I mean, there's a lot of things I'd like to be, but who I truly am, you know, I think me, who I truly am, you know, I think, you know, on my picture on YouTube uh, represents well, put Darth Kytus because that's pretty much me. That's what I look like. And that's pretty much, you know, pretty much where I'd be at. I'd say pretty much like that. Um, I, you know, I'd like to be like Luke Skywalker, but unfortunately I just, you want to be that good at it, but you just can't fake it. You know, I think my, I'm true, more truly like Darth Kytus, but I wish to be like Luke Skywalker. Good answer, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, I'm with you. I, you know, it's hard to be that, that light, if you will. You know, mm-hmm. Discipline. So what would your name be? <laughs> My name? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I, you know, I have no answer for that one. I think Darth something would be, a, yeah. well, you know, something like that. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, this one is kind of a stumper because normally no, nobody gets asked that, you know. Mm-hmm. What That's would a good your one, character yeah. name be? What uh, would yours be? That'd be a good one. I, yeah, I already have it. It would be Trax Bowden. Trax Bowden. Yeah. Wow. I like that. that. I like that. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I, Bowden is, was one of my game names as I was a kid. That was always my character name. And then also, uh, Traxxas was another one I used with X's. And, uh, that's my World of Warcraft char- character that I used to play. So, well, you guys heard it here first. You can't steal that, steal that idea, guys. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> Trax Bowden, right here. Yeah. You so we sign up behind me. Yeah. So if we see that in anybody's story, we're coming after you because it came from this video. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about your favorite character? I know you, I believe you mentioned it's a fem- female. Is that uh, correct? My favorite, uh, my favorite overall character is, is just Luke, Luke Skywalker, oh, because oh. I love his journey. And I just, you know, I, I, I feel like I uh, can, can fit in with a lot of stuff he's going through and feel like in a lot of ways, like I'm him in a lot of the stories. And I feel like when I'm reading a story, it's like I can almost fall in and be, be Luke Skywalker for a little bit. But my favorite, my favorite character besides Luke is Darth Kytus. Uh, you know, my favorite female character, I love um, the Star Archive is my favorite. Love oh. Tinelkaw. Love Jay, Jaina Solo. I also love, uh, for on the male side, I also loved, you know, Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious, uh, Darth Vader, of course, Darth Bane. I, I love all the Sith, so <laughs> pretty yeah. much all those people. I mean, I love the Jedi too, but, you know, more of a, a dark sider. You're a dark sider. Okay. Well, Luke Skywalker is the first, that's the first one for him so far, everyone I've been in- interviewing. So awesome. Um, yeah, so that's cool because that's who uh, I'd that'd probably be my choice too. Awesome. <laughs> what uh, what about your favorite lightsaber color? Uh, if I had a lightsaber, I would probably be red, just to be honest. Mm-hmm. Be with the Sith, eh? Yeah, but I mean, if I didn't have, I don't know. I think, yeah, probably red or uh, maybe like a yellowish orange or maybe uh, bronze, how uh, Lobaka's lightsaber is. He's um, mm-hmm. He's got a really interesting lightsaber color. But probably red, though. I think I just, you know, if I had just a choice, I'd just go with the standard red. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's the first one for that, too. Even if I was a Jedi, I'd have a red blade. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I would, I'm would. i green all the way. Awesome. I love green, green. I love green. Yeah, for sure. So before we wrap things up here, is there anything that you want to let the folks know out there? Anything... Uh, any bigger plans you got coming down the line or? Uh, I think something I want to mention that I didn't mention that I just realized I, never, I didn't mention. And I'm glad I could, could remember 
is I just want to give a, sh- a major shout out to Matt, um, Matt Wilkins. I want to give a shout out to Christopher Nelson. Um, I mean, those two gentlemen right there, where could I begin? Uh, I mean, part of the reason I'm even here on YouTube speaking about Star Wars is because of both of them. You know, with Matt, I think he gave me the confidence to be able to want to be able to just, you know, speak my piece about Star Wars. And uh, I mean, when I first got onto uh, YouTube and was looking up everything about the expanded universe, I found Matt's page. I've, I've, t- I've probably told a story to somebody else before, but I found Matt's page. And when I saw his videos, I was just like, who is this guy? He's the only person online who's showing his face, who's doing these like in-person type reviews of these books. And he's reviewed like every book. So after a while, I was watching all of his videos and I just come to realize that this guy is like the only person doing this. You know, there's a, there, I'm not trying to say there weren't other people, but he was the main person that I saw. And he was really he led he led the expanded universe in a dark time, a really bad time, you know, when Disney took over and everything like that. And he he kept the flame, the spirits going, you know, still to this day. So I'm, I can't thank him enough. And he's taught me so much about the expanded universe through his videos. I mean, I probably watched all of his Star Wars videos, you know, and watch them back over and over because there's so many things you can you can just learn. And I and I, I forget and I go back and watch his videos. And with Chris, uh, you know, he's like the collecting side for me. And he taught me so many things and still every day, you know, when I, when, I, when we get to talking every once in a while, he'll be on the expanded universe group chat. And uh, when I watch his videos, there's so many pieces and gems that you can just gather and learn from his videos and his his charisma and his how do I say this uh, positivity just in the way he carries himself, along with Alex, uh, Brendan Quinlan Voss, Marcel Revanchist, and many others, has really inspired me to to be more positive about uh, everything. You know, I may not agree with the Disney stuff, but you know, there I think with a lot of their a lot of their energy they've taught me to be more positive so yeah i really thank have thanks to all of them and really matt and chris because they made it possible for me to all be here and i think for everybody they're like leaders yeah that, that was a great way to end it man they them uh two gentlemen that you brought up a lot they they paved the way they continue to put out great things and be friendly to fans and helpful and you know eventually i plan to talk to them it's on the list they got family obligations i got family ob- obligations so for sure it's on the list and uh yeah i want to give a shout out to chris too yes for yesterday on the stream and alex all oh, you yeah. guys that, that was a great stream good conversation and thanks for shouting us out that was cool appreciate that well that's all i got today folks only good games i'm going to put his channel link down below check him out yjk books on uh for audible books here check them out and I uh, hope you guys had fun. And until uh, next time, see you guys soon. See you guys later.